have invited associations um, from you know all all throughout the cannabis industry to participate in this where um, you know they will be hosting content and um, having meetings for any MJ BizCon attendees to learn a bit more about what they're doing, what their initiatives are, and um, and and really uh, have people get involved. Um, so uh, we're really excited about that to have so many. Um, I think right now, the last time I looked, I think we had um, almost about 20 some partners that are working with us on this to um, continue to just give exposure to all of these great initiatives that these associations are, you know, are spearheading for, for the cannabis industry. Are most of them nonprofits? Um, yes. Yes. Wow. So mm -hmm. I, I would imagine then that, that some would include like Women Grow or some of the big ones, mm -hmm. will they be in attendance? They will. Um, so um, we will have a full list on our um, website, mjbizcon.com, but um, we have some really great partners in the industry. I think RII, the research, NCIA, um, CTF, um, just to name a few, but um, we have a lot of great groups that are working with us this year. That's fantastic. And full disclosure, the Cannabis Reporter will be a media partner. So I'm I'm very excited about that. This is the first year that... Yes, we're... <laughs> yeah, so that's exciting for us. I mean, we've been we've been observers <laughs> until now. Well, so, yeah, and we're, we're equally excited. And, you know, I just want to thank you for all of the support. Oh, our pleasure, really. Our pleasure. I mean, we're just excited about it. And, you know, it is such an important event. And also publication. I mean, MJ Biz Daily has been a pioneer in the business side of the cannabis industry. And, you know, it's, it's definitely an incredible resource for us as we're doing research for our own content. And, you know, for everybody who wants to learn about the industry, it, it really is just such a fantastic publication and something that anybody who's in the industry knows about it and uses it and reads it, you know, voraciously, mm -hmm. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and then, you know, going back to like your background too, mm -hmm. it seems as though a lot of people are making a move like you did going from these conventional industries into cannabis. What would you tell people who want to, do sort of the same thing, maybe not with events, but just in general? Um, I think, you know, I would say absolutely go for it. You know, if you have a, if you have an opportunity, um, it's been a, a really wonderful industry to be a part of. I think I've really enjoyed um, so many of the people that I've met in this industry so far. I think it's great to be working with something that, you know, everyone is so united and has um, it's a really great cause, and um, it's been um, it's also it's a really great time to also be in cannabis to see the evolution of what's happening um, within you know especially the United States, and so that's getting to be a part of such a fast growing industry as well. You know, it's you know as back to what we were talking about earlier that the you know, the closest thing you can compare it to is the dot-com boom. And to be a part of that for him and along for the ride is is really something pretty fantastic. I couldn't agree more. And I mean, it's it's very exciting, this industry. And also, I think it's very important. And I think it's going to change a lot of, gosh, in the geopolitical landscape as well, I think the cannabis industry is going to help solve a lot of problems from criminal justice to medical issues, uh, the opiate crisis, for example, and so many other aspects of life, you know, sustainability, this uh, addressing climate change with mm -hmm. hemp. And so, yeah, I think you're right. It is very exciting. And I think that for businesses that, you know, want to figure out how to maintain their competitive advantages, I think as this industry has evolved, it started out with a lot of mom and pops. Mm -hmm. And I think that 
you know, as the industry became more normalized and as people lost their trepidation for getting into an industry that was deemed still federally prohibited, you're starting to see a lot more corporate interests come in and gain their own foothold in the industry. And it's starting to change a little bit. And I don't know if this is something you'd feel like you could speak to, but I'm just wondering your observations. Have you seen with, hmm, how do I want to position this? Let me mark my recording because I'm stumbling on this question, but what, I guess what I'm getting at is that, you know, there's, there's this risk that we face with this industry becoming too corporatized, if that makes sense, Mm -hmm. or institutionalized. And, you know, will it lose its, not the grassroots feel that it's had, but that, that very personal, um, passionate, compassionate edge that this industry has had up until now, until, you know, it did become a lot more commercialized. Mm -hmm. Do you have any observations about that? Um, so I'll say, speaking just from the event side, I think, you know, I, I hope it doesn't lose that special feel that the industry does have there. I, I could see some good things, though, from, you know, some more mainstream kind of corporate companies coming in just in that um, it's going to help, you know, our cause and that it will help, you know, mainstream or normalize, continue to normalize once that happens. So, you know, I, I wouldn't say that it's it's going to be all bad when that happens. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's, it, you're right. It's, it's, it's very, um, it has such a, that passionate and compassionate feel. And, you know, so I hope, I hope for, for our sake, you know, working in this industry, I hope that we don't. That. Yeah. I always wonder about that. And because it, w- there was this feeling in the beginning of this industry that we're all in this together. You know, we've got to fight here. We're pushing for something really good, you know, and as as it does become more commercialized, we've already seen some bad apples in the bunch who are not paying attention to their ingredients or not doing their homework. Um, the vaping problem has been, you know, a big thorn in the side of anybody who's pushing for full regulation and giving fodder for people who are against it Mm -hmm. to say, hey, look, see, it's, you know, the marijuana industry, marijuana is dangerous, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I've seen a few of those. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And a little bit nervous, you know, and I I think it is important for people who are, you know, really growing this, you know, people responsible for growing it to kind of keep their eye on the prize, which is that cannabis is an important plant substance that can change lives and, bring prosperity and help solve our our world problems you know so yeah it's it's just interesting but i'm looking forward to meeting some of the new players and did i hear you correctly 1300 exhibitors 1300 exhibiting companies correct and about 35,000 attendees wow <laughs> I I say the same thing every time I look at it. I say the same thing. Wow. Yeah. Gosh, how many expos have that many exhibitors? I mean, even like in home improvement and you know, you, any industry. Any industry, they're they're um, very few, very few um, for sure. It's the uh, there are rankings in the trade show industry, um, and we've been very fortunate to be among. Um, there's uh we've the fastest 50 growing shows that they do by net square footage of exhibit space, number of exhibiting companies, and number of um, attendees, and we've been very very fortunate to to be in among those um, for several years now. That is just absolutely phenomenal. I mean. Hmm. <laughs> Wow, is all I have to say. Yeah, and when when you first said it, I thought I must have misheard you. And then I, I'm just realizing, because it just seems like it would be impossible to get that many exhibitors into, you know, a single space. <laughs> <laughs> well, this year we do have more space. It's, uh, it's hard to imagine. That is actually, we've been asked a lot why we moved from our uh, mid-November time frame to December. Um, and it's, um, it really comes down to when, once you're this large, you know, the amount of space that you need, um, unfortunately you're kind of, you have to go a little bit more with the dates when they can provide it. So, um, at the convention center, that's why we pushed to December. Um, you know, I've gotten good feedback. I've gotten, you know, like, Hey, why, 
why'd you push so late? Um, but um, others have said, hey, it's really good. It's after the harvest. That works for us. Um, you know, it's great to close out the year with. So um, I'm interested to see, you know, how, how that plays out. Yeah, no doubt. And I, I think that December actually is a great time to do it from my perspective, because there's not a lot else going on in the trade show arena Yeah. for cannabis. Right. Exactly. So you're not you're not counter programming or competing with other events, you know, and and people are not so back to back people who go and speak. So are you are you still looking for panelists and speakers? Uh, so we're in the throes of um, uh, wrapping up the agenda now. Um, so my con- content team has been working very diligently on on that. So we'll have. Uh, we have um, the majority of the full agenda on our website right now, but it's um, up being updated every single day. Um, so hopefully that'll all be um, locked in here in the next um, couple weeks. But it's um, every day if you check back, there's there's something new on there right now. Yeah, and um, I'll have all of that information up on the website as well, so that people can actually go to it and look and check out, you know, what's happening there. But so obviously, if your space is sold out, you don't need additional exhibitors, <laughs> which is sort of, that's pretty remarkable. <laughs> Unfortunately not. I wish we could accommodate more, but we are, um, uh, but we don't have a, a single other foot of space <laughs> right now. Yeah, well, you know what? That's okay, because people in the industry who don't have a booth, they'll still benefit from being able to go and mingle and um, meet everyone who is there and, of course, take, a, take part in the content that you're providing. Are there um, mm-hmm. other keynotes or just the one? Um, so that's our main keynote. We do have general sessions um, that are currently being confirmed um, uh, now, so more to come on that, but um, the first uh, opening day of the conference, which is December 11th, Wednesday, um, we open up the morning with um, several keynotes, um, and um, we also will have um, our annual um, year in review that Chris Walsh, our, our president and uh, founding editor, does for the industry. That'll be exciting. That's uh, actually a really good thing, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he does his predictions for the year, um, which going into an election year, I think is going to be really important. And he also evaluates last year's predictions, which I think we all enjoy too. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the state of the industry. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So tell me, is there anything else that you'd like our audiences to know? Uh, anything you have a burning desire to tell people? Yeah, the only thing that we we haven't talked about that is timely because it was just announced today. Um, we have our um, inaugural MJ Biz Daily Awards and um, the finalists for those awards were just announced and they will be celebrated and the winners will be announced on December 12th. We're having a large gala and awards uh, show for, for the industry at the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas. Wow. So what are the categories? Sure. So um, the categories we focused on um, this year are five main ones. We have the Regional Game Changer Award, the Community Impact Award, U.S. Market Leader, Hemp Game Changer, and then the Industry Impact Award. Um, So we have um, about uh, close to 60 finalists right now, um, and we'll be giving out those, um, I think, 13, 13 total awards. That's fantastic. You know, there are just so many events um, happening during um, what we would, we've now um, deemed MJ BizCon Week, which is an actual, we have a proclamation, uh, the governor, that it is MJ BizCon Week. Oh, you know what? That's something else I wanted to ask you about. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So we're very excited about this. Um, We've uh, been proclaimed uh, MJ BizCon Week by the Board of Clark County Commissioners in the city of Las Vegas. So um, that really honors MJ BizCon's just overall um, rapid expanding attendance and just our impact beyond just the convention center walls. 
Um, and so as such, so we have different events going on um, throughout Las Vegas um, throughout the week that expands, you know, it's more than just MJ BizCon at the convention center. Um, so as we were talking about earlier, so 